Okay, so our next presenter is uh, presenting under the name of Haka Says, and he will explain what that means. Um, it's actually a Japanese term, and his Japanese is a lot better than mine. And uh, so Haka Says is a uh, builder and experimenter that's been studying fringe sciences his entire life. His interests and uh, projects have spanned a wide um, array of fields, from electronics to computers to engineering and machining. Uh, his guiding doctrine is that of uh, MacGyver and Robert Heinlein, Heinle that specializes that specialization is for insects. Um, he's attended multiple ESTC conferences and gleaned many useful ideas and experiments from the presenters and attendees, especially from the technically focused presenters. His most recent work follows Eric Dollar's foray into seismic forecasting, Tesla coils, cosmic induction, and param uh, parameter variation, parametric variation. Build a Tesla coil the way Tesla built them is meant to serve as a crash course into a simple, practical Tesla coil design and construction. We'll be touching on some of the differences between modern Tesla coils and the coils that Tesla builds, and why the coils uh, today look so different from the ones Tesla photographed in Colorado Springs. According to Wikipedia, a Tesla coil requires two or three coils, but most of the coils we're working with only have one. No primary, no secondary, just a single extra coil is all that is needed to achieve even greater effects. Uh, Eric Dollar demonstrated this himself with his cosmic induction generator experiments at the 2021 conference. Uh, the coils we'll be working with are in fact quite similar with the plans that you'll find on the internet. You don't need high voltage transformers or expensive measuring equipment to build coils. With luck, you might even be able to find a full, uh, light a full fluorescent bulb from several feet away using only a couple watts. Through experimentation, we've also refined Eric Dollard's coil calculator formulation, uh, formulas and compiled them together into a simple online calculator so new builders can predict with great accuracy how their coils might perform even before they build them. Enjoy the crash course and buckle up. So help welcome Haka Says. MacGyver. MacGyver. Oh, let's have some fun here. We're going to start back with the late 1900s Tesla Colorado Springs presentation uh, photographs that he took, and we're going to look at that, compare it to what the Tesla coils look today. So if we look, this is a Tesla coil photographed late 1800s in the Colorado Springs laboratory. If we notice in the center, there is a large extra coil that is approximately a one-to-one -one height to diameter ratio. Along the entire outside of the room is the primary and secondary. Uh, consists of, I think it was 10 to 20 turns of thick copper, and then the primary was only two turns of copper winding the room. Does that look very similar to, to uh, what Tesla had built, or does it look different? So we'll notice the extra coil on here is missing. That's, that one only has two coils. The primary on here was two turns of thick strap. Primary on there is closer to 10 turns. The secondary on here, which we'll call this the secondary for purposes, the, we'll say the, the high voltage coil is many hundreds of turns of copper wire, whereas this one is less than a couple hundred. This is the Tesla coil, the Colorado Springs replica from 2019 that was presented at the other energy science conference. And we compare Tesla's original coil with what was represented there from, uh, presented from Eric Dollard. So it's difficult to see in the schematics, but on the very top right was what Tesla Tesla's uh, notebook schematic of what he was building. The primary is omitted, and what it is is there's the secondary coil and the extra coil and the antenna or dielectric lead on the end. We compare that to the coil from Colorado Springs. It has uh, an effectively identical configuration with the secondary and Tesla coil in series with each other. And we'll notice the extra coil in here had only something like 100 turns. That was something around 100 turns. Secondary, about 20, about 20. Primary, about two. Primary, about two. So it's much more close match to what was done over 100 years ago. The difference between the modern and the, the Tesla Tesla coil is uh, I happened to do this experiment the morning that video was presented, but one of the, one of the electrical-minded YouTubers had done a presentation making a, a Tesla coil and uh, he actually was nice enough to have the meter on there, 20 volts at one amp. And uh, you can see he can just barely light a tiny compact fluorescent bulb at, uh, let's, say, let's say six inches, we'll give him a little credit. Uh, the one that I had done the same morning using the uh, function generator, I had made it to just about three feet. Uh, 
demos four watts, but that was only because I didn't have uh, equipment that could measure accurately below five. So it turns out it's actually significantly less than four watts. And uh, lighting a full fluorescent tube, uh, not very bright, but it does light it to multiple feet away using basically no power. So it's extremely efficient compared to, obviously, those types of Tesla coils. Uh, framing material, this took some time to develop, but uh, it's explaining basically the same thing. The dissipation factor is the dielectric loss tangent, which is the, the long way of saying how much is lost over time uh, in a Tesla type system. Wire selection, our goal for this is we want the lowest resistance practical. Ideally we want zero ohms, but then we got a cable that weighs uh, you know, 400 pounds and costs $20,000, so that's not gonna work. Uh, a good starting point though is 20 gauge or thicker uh, copper magnet wire. Uh, that's most of the stuff we've been working with. Uh, if you're trying to go better and do the Rolls-Royce coil, you can do silicone coated wire, uh, silver coated Teflon wire that all have really good uh, characteristics. Uh, Litz wire, which is the multi-strand copper wire, tends to have really good characteristics at RF. And uh, one of the things Dollard used uh, back in the Borderlands videos was the outer sheath of uh, coax cable, just the, the regular ham radio coax cable, the outer conductor, because it has a, good a very large diameter, uh, works really good for making coils. So let's actually go build one. This, uh, there's multiple techniques. Dollard has his own. Uh, a lot of people have tweaked. The idea is you can't use PVC pipe because if you wind it on PVC pipe, uh, the dielectricity gets eaten up by the pipe uh, and doesn't give you the magic characteristics. We want something that is minimal framing material and open frame, like all of the ones that you see here. So if you'll notice, uh, I can tune this up here to a high amplitude, and then just moving your hand even a pretty good distance away, you'll see how far I'm detuning the coil. That's changing the frequency by uh, tens of kilocycles. And uh, what else can we do with that? If we look at the power on here, uh, the scope is set to five volt per division. So uh, what are we? We're probably about 50 volts right here. Uh, the function generator is putting out 20 volts, uh, less than one watt. And uh, you can get an idea of how far the dielectric field is expanding into space based on the voltages out of here. Uh, I could actually turn it down a little bit more. Uh, 10 volts per division, we get a little bit closer, it's going to detune it because it's part of the circuit. So that gives you an idea of what kind of uh, coil we're working with here. So we're, we're lighting a bulb more than a foot away with less than one watt of power, less than a third of a watt of power, 0.27 watts. <laughs> uh, and I think a lot of electrical engineers, it might blow their mind because this shouldn't happen. You shouldn't be getting over a thousand volts off of the end of this coil and lighting a bulb at uh, I don't know what this bulb is right. What is it, 20 watts or something like that? It's not full brightness, but it's actually lighting. All of the energy is going into space, getting picked up by this. Sensitivity. Yeah, so you can see it deflecting. That's about four, five, about five, six, ten feet. Yeah. One of the other experiments that I did at the shop uh, before coming to here was uh, Essentially, we, we end up with a pair of Tesla coils in the, what Eric Dollar calls the cosmic induction generator. And what ends up happening is the electrostatic field and the fields that are generated by this uh, compound against each other. They smash into each other and uh, for their setups, they light up the bulb in the middle and generate all these interesting effects. Uh, but one of the interesting things that with that is uh, it's uh, the power that you can pump into that is uh, interesting because you can put many hundreds of watts into this and it doesn't generate heat in the way that you would normally expect. So this isn't exactly uh, the setup, but I have a similar coil. We couldn't quite tune it up, but the idea is this is a uh, high voltage ham radio amplifier supply rack that lets me get uh, something like 1.6 megacycles to, it's all the ham radio band, 1 to 30 megahertz or so at theoretically 2.5 kilowatts. So I took another, uh, something with a similar uh, impedance, some uh, resistance wire the, that was something like 30, 30 ohm, close as I could get to 50 ohm, to get the same match to the coil that I had. And uh, once I started powering it up, uh, we'll see if this handles today, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how many 
how much power we can dump into this uh, and see how much heat is generated with the equivalent amount of power. So, I'm not sure what's going to smoke first, so we'll find out. So we're only 30 watts right now, it's nothing, it's just, you know, kissing the top of it. Uh, we push it up 70 watts, 100 watts, 200, 300, 400, 500. Yeah, I'm going to let it sit at, let's just say 700 watts. So we let that sit for a minute. There's enough heat being generated by the resistance wire. You can see the paper start to singe from the, uh, the power that's being dissipated. So this is the same setup that was going into the pair of Tesla coils that wasn't generating that kind of heat. That it was uh, safe to the touch several minutes later at uh, almost twice the power that it was before. So here we're at 750 watts. It is going to change because the, the heat's going to change the resistance. But that gives you an idea of how a power dissipates in a normal setup, in a normal uh, wire setup. Between the few of us that have been experimenting with this, we have had some successes uh, at, uh, what is it, 20 feet? Well, we're, we're over 100 miles apart. We did have some successful, we had some successful or potentially successful tests uh, getting 145 miles at less than 100, at uh, less than 100 watts. And uh, it was uh, no antenna. This is the antenna. And they were, they just really good grounds on both sides. And we did have really intermittent but functional communication. Uh, but we're just scratching the surface. So anybody here can do the same type of thing and report back on the results. If we scaled this down, we could end up making a, uh, a high voltage power supply that had only one coil, no primary, no secondary. Uh, it would take the output, rectify it, uh, rectify both potentials and have that charge a capacitor and there's your high voltage source. So maybe uh, possibly vacuum tube power supply or some high voltage experiments. Uh, homemade theremin or anything like that because as you notice you're changing the properties of the circuit moving your hand anywhere in there you could also make a like a, a motion sensor that was impossible to break because the dielectric field that there's no way around it armstrong oscillator uh, that's what adrian has over here uh, that's also what a lot of the you'll see online if you look up vacuum tube tesla coil uh, the schematics and guidelines they give you is generally an armstrong oscillator setup uh, didn't have enough space or room or weight to bring everything, but that was one of the ones I was interested in. Uh, vacuum to very simple once you see the schematic and actually start building it. Uh, a year ago, I had not touched a vacuum tube, but uh, thanks to Griffin and some you know research online, I'm pretty comfortable making vacuum tube coils that function well decently. Uh, neon sign transformer will work too, and uh, I think that is it. So all I say for her to finish this is go forth and build. I hope I've given everybody enough information they have to begin constructing, experimenting, and messing with this stuff. Uh, Hakasez is a bilingual play on words. Hakase is a Japanese word for professor or, uh, or scientist or teacher. So Hakasez is a uh, professor speaks. <laughs>